Let's first determine whether the mean value theorem applies to this function on the interval 1 to e. The conditions of the mean value theorem in this example require that our function be continuous on the closed interval 1 to e and differentiable on the open interval 1 to e. Well, the given function is a natural log, and a natural log function is discontinuous where its argument equals 0, and it doesn't exist when x is less than or equal to 0, but that's okay because our closed interval goes from 1 to e. As far as differentiability is concerned, we can take a derivative. The derivative of the natural log of 4x is 1 over 4x, and then the chain rule says we have to multiply that result by the derivative of 4x, which is 4. The 4s cancel, and we get that our derivative is just 1 over x. This derivative is only discontinuous when x equals 0, so our function is only not differentiable at x equals 0, and when x is less than 0. But our interval in question goes from 1 to e, so we have determined that our function is continuous on the closed interval interval 1 to e and differentiable on the open interval 1 to e. So the conditions of the mean value theorem are satisfied. Now the conclusion of the mean value theorem says this. There exists some point x equals c on the interval from 1 to e such that the derivative of this function evaluated at c takes on the same value as the average rate of change of the function on that interval. If I'm going to do a really quick explanation of this, what this says is if we have some function between the two x values a and b, their two y values are then f of a and f of b, and as long as this function is continuous between those two points and differentiable between those two points, then there is some point between a and b where the slope of this tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change of that function is equal to the slope of this secant line or the average rate of change of this function. We call this particular x value that falls between a and b c and the slope of this tangent line we call f prime of c and we're saying that that is equal to the slope of this secant line and the slope of a secant line between two points looks just like that. Okay, so that's your 30 second mean value theorem lecture. Let's try to finish up our problem. The mean value theorem tells us that there exists a C such that this equation is true. Well, okay, we found F prime of X earlier. If we plug C in for X, we get that F prime of C is one over C. What is F of E? Well, going back to our original function up here, if we plugged E into it, we would get the natural log of four E. There's more than one way to write this, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Uh, also in our formula, the mean value theorem gives us is an f of 1. So if we look at our original function and plug 1 into it, we just get the natural log of 4. Let's plug all of this stuff into this formula given to us by the mean value theorem. We get 1 over c equals the natural log of 4e minus the natural log of 4 all over e minus 1. Now if we're just looking for a c value, we can get c by itself just by taking the reciprocal of both sides of this equation. And the question I want to ask is can this be simplified or reduced? And I think that the answer is is yes, if we remember our rules for logarithms, we can keep the numerator exactly as it is. And as always, there's more than one way to do this, but one of our rules of logarithms says that if we have the difference between two logarithms that are of the same base, we can combine them into one logarithm and divide their arguments. Now this is pretty neat because the four in the argument of the natural log cancels with the other four. That leaves us with a natural log of just e in the denominator, and the natural log of e is just one. So we get a final answer of c equals e minus 1. That's an exact value of c if we want an approximate value. That would be about 1.718 and so on. And 1.718 is on the interval from 1 to e that we were given in the problem. So I think we've done it. We've verified that the mean value theorem applies to this given function, and we have found the value of c that the mean value theorem guarantees exists. Okay, well, I hope that that problem helps you out. I'll make sure a link pops up on your screen right now. It sends you to a playlist that has a few more videos just like this one. Great, I'll see you in the next problem of the day.